Hey, welcome back to another Neos tutorial. This time we're going to go over the line graphing uh, capabilities that were just recently added to Neos. They're super cool for graphing and charting, and uh, also just to play around with. So let's get going and I'll, I'll show you how they work. So here in Smooth POV I've got an example. You can find this example in the root of my public holder for now. Um, it just graphs random numbers between 0 and... sorry, between negative 20 and positive 20 on a graph, and then this uses the uh, rainbow material from my public folder to render it. Building something similar to this, but a little bit simpler, just to sort of go through the basics of how this works. Let's get going. So you're going to need a developer tooltip and a logic tooltip to do this. So let's go ahead and first of all equip a uh, developer tooltip. In some free space in the world, go to create new empty object. This just creates a blank object with nothing on it, and this is what we're going to use to build things. We're going to need to add a bunch of components, so let's get going. First of all, we're going to need a mesh renderer. This controls the rendering of our graph, so go to rendering mesh renderer. Then we're going to need a uh, actual mesh, which is the responsible part for drawing the, uh, the graph. Uh, well, drawing the mesh data of the graph. So here we go to assets procedural meshes, scroll down and you're looking for standalone rect mesh M, and then go for line graph mesh. Once this is added, grab the word standalone rect mesh line graph mesh, and then put it into the mesh renderer. That will create uh, the uh, mesh for you. We also need a material for the mesh renderer. For that we're going to just use an unlit one, so for that open up the developer tooltips menu and go to create new materials unlit unlit. Drag that window to the side and you'll see a white ball. With uh, one hand grab it, with the other hand just click on that materials and we'll get uh, a material set up. Next we're going to go ahead and add the uh, cool component which makes the magic happen. This can be found in utility and it is value graph recorder. Now value graph recorder is the only one that can work really with line graph mesh currently and that's because line graph mesh you needs um, an array and arrays currently aren't supported by many of Neos' components and, and things but they are supported by value graph recorder. So to set up value graph recorder, what we need to do is drag the values word from the standalone rect mesh into the source, uh, not the source value, the target array value here. We also need to grab start index and drop that into target array offset. That's now set everything up, but we actually need a value to graph. And so to do that, we're going to be using just mathematical functions to create a sine curve over time. Uh, sine is just a number that goes between uh, negative one and positive one, depending on what you put into it. And so we're going to put in the time and we'll get an animation there. So if we go to attach component here, we need a place to store this value. So I'm going to use a value field here. So data value field, value field float. Then I'm going to swap to the logics tooltip here grab the word value field float and push secondary so that we get an interface for value field float. Then we're going to open up the node browser here and we're going to need a few nodes. We're going to go to input t times 10 and drop that in and then we're going to go to math and sine or sin which is right at the bottom. Here we connect t times 10 to sine and then sine to value and that will start the value for, uh, going up and down. Then we need to go to the value field here and drag value and drop it into source value. And you'll start to see that we now get our graph displaying. Now it's a bit sort of big and, and chunky. Uh, we can turn that down a little bit. So what we need to do up here is lower this width property. And then uh, we can also increase the X value here of the uh, rect, which is at the top there, rect. So I'm gonna just increase that to say five and now we've got a nice sign graph working. Uh, what I recommend for using this rect mesh uh, in the world is if you drop the scale down to sort of 10% uh, of its regular scale, so 0.1 in all properties, then it's a lot more manageable, and you can go ahead and increase this x value here to say 20, and now you'll see things happening here. The last thing that we need to do is make sure that our min and max values are set up correctly. These are what the mesh is expecting our minimum and max values to be. So I'm going to go ahead and enter negative 1, in the minimum value, and that way we get a graph between negative one and positive one, which is what the sine curve is looking at. Now you may think that this doesn't look like a you know a regular graph, or you know it doesn't look that peaky, etc. And that's because sine is very uh, repeatable and very um, uh, known, so the graph doesn't actually jump around that much. If you want to play with making other graphs, now that you've got this set up, you can go ahead. So go to the node browser here, and you can go to math random. And go random float and we can just drop that in random float takes a minimum which we're going to enter as negative one 
and a maximum, which we're going to enter as one. And then we can plug random float directly into this value here, and now you'll see that we get a, a much more random graph. Now, random float doesn't really have a control over how fast it's operating. Um, it kind of just updates sort of every every update cycle. It will it will generate a random float, but uh, you can actually slow that down if you go back to the value recorder here and you look for the property that says update interval. This is how often it should update. So if we change this to, change this to two, this graph will only update once every two seconds. So you'll see the new values coming in here are a lot more smoother, but it is quite slow. So let's go ahead and drop that, and we can drop it down to sort of naught point one and then it'll update 10 times a second or 0.01 and then that's 100 times a second which is sort of back up to where the speed is so i'm going to raise it up to five and then we've got sort of a nice smoother graph going that's easy to read you can graph anything you can um graph the position of things you can graph users ping you can graph um their uh fps all sorts of stuff like that you can also graph voices but using voices is another mesh type which i'll go over in the next video on this topic i hope this makes sense do let me know if you have any questions this component is brand new so i did stumble over a little few things here but that's just because i literally learned how this worked about an hour ago in uh, ng's world with uh, gareth and alex Thanks to them for, uh, you know, trying out things with me. We got some cool visualizations going, and I'm sure we'll see some co cool stuff with this uh, mesh going forwards. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.